Alright guys, welcome back to another Opera Omnia video where we're going to be talking about Payne's LD ability. In this video, I'm going to go in full details on how her LD ability works because it's best that I go over how her ability works, show off some infographics that was done by Rem from the City of DB who gave me permission to use uh, his infographics in this video so that that way you guys have a strong understanding on how to use pain if you plan on pulling for her LD weapon with the upcoming Machina banner. So we're going to go over and look at the infographics done by Rem and I'm going to make sure that you guys have that strong full understanding on how she operates because the biggest thing about her is that depending on which position you have her and your team comps will either benefit your team with auras will either be a negative for the enemies with auras or can be a mixture of both so we're going to be talking about all of that in this video and once again a big thanks to Ren from the city of db for allowing me to use his infographics in this video to help you guys out so as always, if you guys do enjoy the video, consider liking the video and subscribing for future Opera Omnia content. Let's go ahead and jump into it, guys. Let's take a look at the infographics and see how Pain operates. So we're first going to start off with Pain's overhead that she gets from her LD ability. Now, this only applies to Pain herself, and that's it. So Pain will be getting a 100% critical hits rate up. She will also get a 5% HP damage delta per debuff on the target, so eight debuffs will equal a 40% HP damage delta. Also, as long as you have the status break debuff that Pain inflicts with her skills, then she will also receive a 30% brave damage up and a 30% stolen brave up on targets with this debuff. Now, let's talk about positionals. So with Pain, if Pain is on the right side of the team, she will be inflicting the enemies with some negative auras. So, and these these auras are brave damage dealt down, brave recovery down, and HP damage taken up. Now, to be able to increase uh, pain's overhead with the debuff icon, you pretty much have to have uh, characters or your other teammates or call abilities um, inflict more than two debuffs in one. Turn. So take example Owen, right? Owen, if he is able to inflict uh, two, D, uh, two debuffs, then Payne's uh, debuff overhead will be going up by one. Same for Vanille. If Vanille inflicts uh, two plus debuffs, then it will increase by one. And, you know, it doesn't have to be just these two characters. They are just like examples to use for this infographic because there are many other characters that do inflict uh, more than two debuffs, especially, uh, you know, take example, uh, Ferris, right? Ferris is able to inflict what five, uh, five debuffs, if, if I'm not mistaken. So that right there will increase, um, Payne's debuff overhead by two instead of one, because she is inflicting more than four debuffs at the same time. So there are many different ways, whether it be with your teammates, whether it be with Payne alone, cause Payne is able to increase it as well or whether it be, be via call abilities. Now we're going to take a look if Pain is on the left side, because if Pain is on the left side, Pain will actually be providing auras via, uh, uh, excuse me, auras to your teammates. So these auras are going to be Brave Damage dealt up, Brave Recovery up, and then Stolen slash Gained Brave Overflow Limit up. Now, to increase this one, all you have to do is basically grant yourself uh, two buffs to increase it by one. Same thing uh, with, uh, you know, with the example that is being shown, like with Saz. Saz has uh, with his skill two, if I'm not mistaken, one of his skills, let, let's just say that. Um, so one of his skills, he is able to provide the party with multiple buffs. So that means that it's going to be increasing much higher because of the amount of buffs that he is granting to his teammates. So right, just right there is a pretty good example of what Pain will actually do. And uh, again, if you're able to grant yourself more than two buffs, if you're able to grant yourself four or six if possible, whether it be with your characters or call abilities, then it will increase 
pain's overhead depending on how many buffs you are increasing. So uh, pretty easy. It's not that it's not that hard to actually like figure out how pain works. You're just gonna make sure that like you know if you are bringing pain uh, in your team comps that you you have the characters ready uh, to be able to increase either or of the um, uh, of the either the debuff or the buffs uh on the overhead so uh you know that's like one thing so in a way it's like you're basically trying to uh work around her and the oars that she or and and her overhead really now if pain is in the middle the difference here between having her on the left and right side is that you are not going to be going to the full 10 stacks so if pain is in the middle, you can only go up to five stacks because you are benefiting from uh, pain providing ores to your teammates and pain also inflicting uh, the enemies with those negative ores. So as you can see, pain will be providing the brave damage dealt up, brave recovery, and the stolen slash gain, brave overflow limit up to her teammates. And then the enemies will be receiving that brave damage dealt down. Brave recovery down and HP damage taken up, and the same thing goes when trying to increase her uh, uh, her overhead uh, counts. So if you're trying to increase the buffs, all you got to do is grant at least two buffs in one turn, and it, it'll increase by one. And then the same goes for the debuff. If you are able to inflict uh, two debuffs onto the enemy, then it will uh, increase by one. And both of these go up to a max stacks of five since pain is in the middle. So, you know, depending on what kind of team comps you are actually going in with pain, whether it be uh, a team comp that provides a lot of buffs, then she would be on the left side. And then, you know, if you are bringing, let's say, uh, call abilities or teammates that um, that is able to inflict or constantly inflict the enemies with debuffs, then pain would be best suited to be on the right side, or you can have a mixture of both. Even though you won't get the same high percentages um, that you would be getting if she was on the left or the right side, but you are still getting some very good percentages. So let's take example uh, for her for the ores to the team, right? That brave damage dealt up at five stacks, she will be providing the the uh, the team with thirty percent. But if you were to have her on the left side, she would be providing a sixty percent. So there is uh, some differences, but it just depends on what what kind of team comp you're gonna be rocking, and you know whether you want those ores or if you want those negative ores onto your onto the enemies or if you just want a mixture of both now to end the video off i'm going to show you guys some gameplay to show an example of how pain operates with uh different characters or well, three different team comps so for this first team comp this team comp is going to focus on the auras that pain is provided to the team this next team comp is going to focus on the negative auras that is going to be affecting the enemies and then finally we're ended off with uh, having paint in the center where we have uh, auras for the team and negative auras for the enemy. So uh, we're going to start off with the very first team and, uh, and I'll show you guys uh, how things work in terms of like uh, granting yourselves a uh, buzz and whatnot, etc, etc. Okay, so with this team comp, I am already starting off with three in the buff counter of paint overhead. Now, to increase it, like I mentioned earlier, you pretty much have to grant uh, at least two buffs to increase it by one. So if we use Lena's uh, skill two, it granted the buff that uh, that was uh, that was granted onto Pain and Yuna. So that means uh, with that counting as two, that increased her uh, buff icon from three to four. So let's uh, let's do it again. And as you can see, now it actually jumped up to six. And I guess it just probably depends on the type of buff that you are going to be uh, granting uh, to your teammates. So let's go ahead and break A. Let's use our LD ability. Because our LD ability should count as an addition. No, it does not. Okay. So I apologize for that. Now we're going to use a uh, Yuna skill. So we're going to use her... Um, her cheer ability. Now, her cheer ability, if I'm not mistaken, does have two buffs on it. So let's go ahead and use that. 
And as you can see, because of the number of buffs that she granted to herself being six in total, it increased up to nine. Pretty self-explanatory on how things work. Now we're going to switch over to the team that affects the enemies. So now we are in the second team, which is going to affect uh, the enemies with the negative aura uh, from Payne's overhead. So as you can see, she is starting off at three, and that is because each of these enemies has two plus debuffs. So that counts as one, two, three, which in total, you will start off with number three, at, I guess like three out of, out of 10 stacks for her debuff icon. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna use, um, we we'll use skill two. And then work a brand for use is skill one because that inflicts the uh, the enemy with I believe two extra debuffs. So as you can see now her overhead went to six because they have uh, or each of the enemies has five debuffs. So uh, remember every two debuff increases by one. So for C you got two, uh, B two, and then A two. That is a total of six. For the uh the debuff icon on Payne's overhead. Now let's do Lilith Set, because Lilith Set is able to inflict a very good amount of debuffs onto the enemy. And this should max out the uh the overhead, the debuff icon on Payne's overhead. So there you go. Now she is at 10 out of 10 stacks, and the enemies are getting affected negatively by the negative aura from Payne's overhead. Now let's end it off and we'll switch over to the final team okay so now we are in the final team comp where pain is going to be in the center so uh, as you can see here she is starting off with the uh with four on the debuff icon and one on the buff icon so remember uh having pain in the middle means that you are going to be getting half of the percentages that you saw in the infographic but it is still a very good amount of uh auras and debuffs that are yeah auras for your team and negative auras for the enemies that that you are uh getting out of pain's overhead so let's go ahead We'll use uh, Ami's uh, LD ability, which should inflict, uh, what, three debuffs? Or oh, one debuff, excuse me. So with that, because of the fact that uh, Amidatalian was able to inflict one debuff onto the enemy, now Pain Stacks is at five out of five. Now let's go ahead and uh, let's use uh, her LD ability. Okay. Then we can go ahead and use, uh, what you call it, Yuna's... Uh, Skill two, God, bring for it. <laughs> and as you can see, now we are at four out of five stacks. If you do it again, we are finally at five stacks. So, uh, uh, you know, it's it's pretty simple. It's not that hard to understand. But just in case uh, for players who are having a little bit of a uh, of a confusion on how her her LD ability works, uh, hopefully. Um, the infographics and this gameplay gave you a good example on how to use paint and many different ways that you can actually use paint and help her in increasing either the debuff or the buff icon on her overhead to whatever uh, maximum amount of uh, stacks that she is able to get on it. So uh, uh, if you do have any other questions, do let me know down in the comment section below and I will try to answer them as quickly as possible. And of course, if you do enjoy the video, if you did find it informative, please uh, consider sharing it around the community so that that way it can help out everybody else who is still wondering on how her ability works. And uh, with that being said, though, guys, if you guys did enjoy the video, consider liking the video and subscribing for future Opera Omnia content. Thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you guys in my next video.